from the downright silly to the absolutely sublime. We've become a nation obsessed with our motorhomes. This, this is, is our motorhome! That was right in my ear, that. The freedom to take to the road. We can gun it now. Is that what you're going to do? Well, no, I don't know. I'll get used <laughs> to it. And wake up with gorgeous views all around you. This is glorious. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Means that half a million of us are having a motorhome holiday this year. Electric blanket, my God, look at that. Hot water bottle. Oh, yes. <laughs> Including me. Ski jacket, ski pants. Well, you're not going skiing. Hangers. And my wife, Suki Webster. It's a home from home, mate. So join us as we travel the country, discovering the delights of motorhoming. Ah, <gasps> there's an oven. I was not expecting an oven. Collecting top tips from the camper van as we meet. The heat should ignite the coals inside. Don't get it on my head! <laughs> <laughs> and getting the must-have motorhoming gadgets road tested. Ah! That's lovely, isn't it? So buckle up. Oh, oh dear. And strap everything down. God almighty, there we go again. You can't claim to have driven a motorhome until you've knocked the left-wing mirror. Ready for our ultimate motorhome adventure. <laughs> now, have you got any sense? That's your trailer for the series. Hundreds of thousands of Brits this year have been tempted by the flexibility and freedom of motorhoming. The idea that we can stop when we want, where we want, and luxuriating comfort is really very appealing. So Suki and I have decided to give it a go. So, uh, you're looking forward to this? I'm very excited. Yes. Having never done it before, we're starting off close to home in Kent and are picking up our four-wheeled passport to paradise at the Canterbury Camping and Caravan Club that's if we can find it. I suppose I just keep pressing this until I find out the yeah. one that's out. Try clicking that one. None of these seem to be reacting to this. Oh, uh, that one's fancy with the leather seats. No, that's not doing anything. Hang on a minute, I think I'm pressing the wrong button. Are you? Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm signalling to the AA. Hang on, let me try this one. <gasps> ah, that's it. That's ours. That's the one. This is cool. Our rental is three and a half tonnes of A-class motorhome, a 24-foot four-berth vehicle that anyone with a full licence can drive, including us. For around £300 a day, you get a motorhome with fitted kitchen, shower, bed, and most importantly, a room with a different view every time you park. It's a bit big, isn't it? Oh, look at this, baby. Oh wow, it's good head height actually. Yes, that's good. Um, Kitchen. Gas hob oven and grill. <gasps> There's an oven. I was not expecting an oven. Oh, look at this. There's a lot of toilet roll. It's like early lockdown that somebody's gone right. big on the toilet roll. Yes, but that's I suppose good. it depends on what the driving's like. <laughs> oh, here's our bedroom. Oh yes, this is all right, isn't Don't it? Don't get your feet on the bed though. No. It's quite firm. During the 1980s, nice. I lived in a bed suit that was much smaller than this. Didn't have a loo in, inside there either. Well, it's a bit, uh, yeah. I mean, one leg can go out the door if you want it to. <laughs> Since the first motorhome was built out of a truck in 1910, they've come a long way. The 60s saw VW campers adopted by the hippies, while NASA went for the iconic Airstream. Today, there's a huge variety of motorhomes to choose from, including this Colossus, which comes complete with its own garage. And on our budget, you get lots of room with space-saving features. Back in the driver's seat, the coin has been tossed and Suki won. Now we just have to work out where we're going. So we're heading to uh, Kingsdown campsite. It's um, oh, yes. right on top of the cliffs, just along the way from Dover. So right. there should be a beautiful view right across to France. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I think as we're in the spirit of adventure, you know, we should sort of like take the scenic route uh, and e.g. drive the other way. Okay, so uh, head north. So for our first ever road trip in our newly acquired house on wheels, we have decided to explore Kent, 
or the Garden of England as it's known to the locals. Beautiful seaside towns nestling in gorgeous countryside, dotted with twisty narrow lanes. Once we get going, that is. Let's switch it on. <laughs> oh, How does it feel about you? You're going to be quite nervous, I I think, driving something like this. Well, yes. we'll soon find out, won't we? Handbrake? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, I like we're moving. How does it feel? It's good, actually. Suki's driving a motorhome. Mm. It's so automatic that actually. Oh, now I'm just sitting there. Oh. Oops, there goes the fine china. Okay, left or right, hun? Uh, oh yes, okay, so yes, have a look. According to the map, um, yeah, you're hitting the road now, so it's going to be right. Am I so right that side? You're, you're close-ish, but I don't think you're dangerously close. I mean, this is the sort of road if you do meet something. I um, just speed up. Speed up, yes, unless it's, if it's smaller than you, it's their problem, isn't it? Oh, hang on. Right, I'm going to come in here just a little bit. You're quite close to that fence behind you. Right, I'm going to try and miss that telegraph pole. Yeah. Woohoo! Success! No telegraph poles were harmed during the filming of this sequence. Hurrah! We're on our way! Tonight we're bedding down on the east coast near Dover, and as we've got the rest of the day to explore and pull up where we like, I have had a great idea. Whitstable. Ooh. Oysters. Oh, like <gasps> yes. Whitstable. It's been a long time since I had an oyster. With the promise of oysters on the menu, Suki picks up the pace, 10 miles to Whitstable, and will be there in 15 seconds. Right, we can gun it now. Let's <laughs> see that, what this baby does. Is that what you're going to do? Well, no, I don't know. I'll get used <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's rev her up to 50. Do you think it's a him or a her? I think it's a her. Why do you think it's a she? She's a good girl. <laughs> She's a good girl? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. What do you want to call her? Um, how about something like um, Mrs. Palmer? <laughs> no, that's too formal. Too formal. Millie. Millie Palmer. Millie the motorhome. It might be a he. No, it's not a he. Might not be gender specific. True. Dominic Horse. <laughs> there we are, that's the one. Uh, We've got two names at the moment. Millie the Motorhome. Millie the Motorhome. And Dominic Horse. Dominic Horse. Fair enough. Oh, look, there's a sea in front of us. Woo, look at that. Our first stop the picturesque fishing town of Whitstable on the shores of the Thames estuary. A couple of fascinating facts about Whitstable. It was inhabited as far back as the Stone Age and was more recently voted the best coastal town in the UK. These beach huts are amongst the most Instagrammed in the UK. They bounce with colour under a clear blue sky. One recently sold for £150,000 and didn't even have water or electricity. Unlike Millie, who has both, plus wheels so you can park where you like, within reason. Well done. Mm. <laughs> Your first Not drive. Not bad for a first test. Absolutely. Oh. oh, we're somewhere else. Beautiful. In the mood for oysters? Yes, please. Whitstable must have known we were coming. So what instrument is that actually? In English, it's a hurdy-gurdy. Oh, it's an actual hurdy-gurdy. Is yeah. it a difficult instrument to play? It's a demon. Is it? It's a devil, yes. It's a bit like... Yes. <laughs> We're on a mission to find oysters. I'm standing myself. I'm allergic. Cock syndrome. Ah, oh, yes. Are you? Yes. I had some bad ones about 30, 40 years. Then ago. you can't have them again, can you? Uh, no, to, just to taste them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice to nice meet you. Nice to see you. you. Another Whitstable fact the Romans farmed oysters here and started shipping them back to Rome in about 80 AD, around 3 30 in the afternoon. Hi, Hello. 
I'll take some Whitstable rock oysters, please. What do you want, baby? Yes, I think I get uh, large ones, I think. The large ones? Yes, please. And so they're all local to here, it says on your sign? Yes, they're all local. Farm, last farm, which is just over there. And how do you farm an oyster? How do we farm them? How do you get the tractor underwater? Uh, we wait for the low tide to go out. <laughs> right. <obviously. laughs> You're making that look very easy opening then, but from experience when I've tried before, it's, 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 a, it's a skill that you have to learn, isn't it? Well, I've been opening them 17 years now. Have you? Yeah. yeah. So if they're not being farmed, how do you catch them? Well, we've got the old Melissa. We used to dredge them. You drag the cage from the bottom of the shore on the seabed. You pick up all the oysters and obviously the, the rest of it go back to sea. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Melissa is quite like Millie. So if you had a motorhome, would you call it Millie or Dominic? Millie. That's one to me. I don't think it's a bit it's not relevant. I mean, well, he's an expert at opening oysters. I'm not sure he's an expert in, in, well, in naming motorhomes. No. We'll carry on with the pole as well, we go. Yeah, carry on with the pole by all means. Right. I keep looking at them and I'm desperate to have one. <laughs> <laughs> Dive in, baby. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, that's really good. Can we take them down to the beach? Of course you right? can. Yeah, yeah, yeah of thank course. You, so thank nice you. to meet okay, you. Thank, thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I wonder what the farm actually looks like if the tide wasn't in. I don't know. I don't think you got my joke about a tractor underwater. <laughs> In the last few years, motorhoming has become increasingly popular. So much so that in 2021, some campsites have reported a 500% increase in reservations. Fortunately, we've already booked for tonight in Kingsdown near Dover. So we're driving there via Margate, which is just 17 miles along the coast. Am I good, your side lock? No, you're doing really well, my darling. Thanks, sweet pea. There was a pet shop there that said uh, free local delivery, so they stick a puppy through your letterbox. <laughs> so this is, uh, well, Margate coming up now. Um, and this beautiful old Victorian seafront. Yes, it is lovely, isn't lovely. it? Lovely. Margate was one of Britain's first seaside resort towns and the perfect place for a Victorian staycation. In fact, it was a popular destination right up to the 1960s until the arrival of cheap package holidays. Thanks to a regeneration programme, Margate is back. Not that it ever went away, only its visitors. It would have been a lovely place to pull over, but we need to be in Dover by nightfall. And I might have got us lost. And when you get down to here, uh, turn left. So you might have sent me a bit of a funny way there. Yeah, well, you see, the trouble is uh, I'm not driving, you see? Yeah. All I'm doing is navigating, so if you go wrong, who's that? When you say you're navigating, yeah. do you think that was navigating? Well, yeah, it was. I think that was nothing-gating rather than navigating. No, all I can do is look at the map and misunderstand Left, where we right, are. Left, right, what are we doing? I don't know. Uh, go straight ahead, there's a bridge there. Oh, no, all right, turn right. Somebody's got a boat in their front garden. Yes, that's... Uh, Obviously, the tide comes in quite high. Yeah. Finally, we're out of town and heading towards Dover. And suddenly, the Great British Summer lives up to its reputation. And I'm starting to wish Millie was a little smaller. Oh, uh, oh dear. Ah, who needs wing mirrors anyway? So, do you think it's a sort of... should just pop back on, I think. Have you done it? Like that. That's better than the AA. Here in minutes, fixed for nothing. <laughs> Not fit for nothing, fixed for nothing. There we are. That'll stay on for at least five minutes, lady. Do you want to be, do you want to be nice to the mechanic? Yeah, all right. Hop on board. Thanks very much. I've done something practical for the first that, time in yeah. my life. I feel the testosterone coursing through my body. I bet you do. I don't think I've ever seen you be so butch. Anything else you want fixing, lady? Yes, please. What? 
Could you build me an attic extension? Oh, we're here. Well done. Beep, beep. Oh, I'm glad we haven't got a picture tent in this weather. After the summer we've had so far, no wonder these motorhomes are becoming so popular. Now all we need to do is choose our spot and park up. Hey, you might have to get out and help me in. Is this good? Keep going. I can't hear you. Keep going, yes, keep going. Keep going. Should I straighten up or not? Straighten up. You've got about five, ten, six feet, four feet, three feet. You can stop there. The eagle has landed. Look at that. Yeah. That is great, isn't it? Well done, me darling. A pristine campsite with access to all the amenities we might need. It's perfect for our first foray into motorhoming. So, should we try and hook up the electricity? Yes, let's do it. Okay, does that one have sticky out bits or any bits? Sticky out bits. So, I'll do this one. Looks like it goes like that. Oh, hang on, I don't know if that's right actually. Hang on. Well, you exceeded yourself with the wing mirror. I think that's on. I don't know, I'm not sure. Oops. It feels like it's on. Do you want to see what you think? Oh, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's it. Well done. So um, I sort of softened it up for you. Yeah, yeah. Parked up and plugged in, it's time to relax. Okay. Shall I get the chairs out? Yeah, get the chairs out. It Come might on. be raining, but we're well, British, so we have to pretend. Is there an awning on this? Mm -hmm. I can't see anything that looks like an awning, but then you might press a button and it all falls out. I'll get the rest of whatever's in there. No awning makes me wonder about an upgrade. I'll show you the pride of the fleet. In Devon, Richard Churchill specialises in building bespoke monster motorhomes, costing about three times the average UK property. The biggest rigid motorhome you can put on the road, 12 metres long, just under four metres high, 540 brake horsepower, fully electric awning. Unlike ordinary vehicles that have a boot in the car, this has a car in the boot. So this vehicle is set up with a garage, but you can have it as a uh, potentially an ensuite, so a downstairs bathroom or even something like a jacuzzi hot tub. The world is your oyster. <laughs> and the madness doesn't stop there. Take a look at this. Okay, so this is the interior, which might look big at the minute, but uh, power the slide outs out, it becomes even bigger. There's even room for a king sized bed. In the main saloon area, we've got a high low TV, full pan roof, which opens right the way back. We've got all electric blinds in the windows, a nice big dining table that lifts up and opens out. In the cockpit, we've got a 360 monitoring system. You can see uh, rear view, front view, left side, rear side, and two rear quarters. Hydraulic leveling system, remote control, so you can level the vehicle automatically. Air seats, suspended, heated, and fully reclinable with massage function. And what would you have to pay for all this? A staggering £650,000 plus VAT. This is high-end motorhoming. Meanwhile, back in the real world, we may not have a car in the boot, but Suki's packed just about everything else. What's in there? Binoculars. Oh, oh yes, that's, that's good. That's just for bird watching. <sighs> no rear window on God, my you, watch, You get mate. caught in one nudist colony and you're never at the end of it. <laughs> the longest... Gas fire lighter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Electric blanket. My God, look at that. Hot water bottle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ski jacket. Ski pants. Well, you're not going skiing. Hangers. It's a home from home, mate. You're not going to believe this. Go on. There's a nudist colony just behind that tree. Typical of you to find they're playing, that. They're playing basketball. How dare you. Oh, it's not basketball. I do apologise, madam. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of a long but lovely day, Suki has a surprise in store. Come in and shut that door. Okay. Lie down. 
lying down. Oh, oh it's nice to lie down after a long day. Are you ready? Yes. Mm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, it's moving. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. After a long day. I think I could go to sleep just looking at that. Mm. So we survived our first night in the motorhome, despite Paul's feet sticking out the end of the bed. And it's time for breakfast. Let's start with coffee. Always a good start. Do you want to heat these up or? Mm, we're still on coffee. Coffee, sorry. There are procedures. Yes. That coffee. have to be followed. Coffee, coffee. Until I have some coffee. Coffee, coffee. So just think, because you might have to heat them up, you might have to put them in the, in the, in the oven. There are procedures. Coffee, coffee. In the pressure cooker environment of a small kitchen, what's needed are clearly defined roles, and I'm not talking about croissants. You could find the salt and pepper if you want to be helpful. It seems that Paul has defined his role as mostly sitting. You can do it today if I, you want No, to. I just don't want to get in your way. Oh, OK. Salt and pepper in here? Mm-hmm. There we are, looks like I can... Thank you. I'll tell you something else you could do, love. What? And that's get the frying pan out of there. Of course, non-stop, isn't it? Is it time to plunge the coffee? No, not quite yet. Hmm. So many rules. I thought you put milk in. Some people do. I prefer water. Hmm. I prefer milk. No, I, but I don't want tough scrambled eggs. They'll be lovely scrambled eggs. Will they? And you will like them. <laughs> Coffee yet? Yeah. Mm, yes, please. Do it now? Do it now. Most of it's going into the cup. Well done, love. That's it. Put the butter on the table. Butter on the table. Knives and forks are in there. Knives and forks are in there. Put the butter thing on top. Put the butter want. thing on top of the butter. Put the knife on top of the butter top. Knives and forks in here. I'm having to do it with the fish slice because we haven't got a wooden spoon. Oh dear. The plan today is to work our way west along the Kent coast towards Dungeness before turning north. And now that we've got to grips with the kitchen and got our batteries charged up, we're being braver tonight. We will be parking up for a spot of wilder camping near Tenterton. Right now though, a glorious morning means that we can enjoy our coffee al fresco, which is a posh way of saying outdoors. Oh, hello you lovely, that's love? nice. Thank you. Oh, is it hot? Yes, it's fine. Don't get too used to this. What? Me serving you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That view is astonishing, isn't it? I mean, that it is... really is lovely, and I'm surprised there's lots of ferries going. Yeah, they, that's a Dover just along the coast, isn't it? Do you want to drive today? Yeah, I mean, if you want to make it a mystery tour, I, I, I'm happy with that. I bet you ten quid I can't get out of the car park. <laughs> Underwhelmed by the prospect of the Merton mystery tour around the car park, I find myself back in the driver's seat. Oh my stars! There's a huge big castle on here. That must be. I would imagine that would be Dover. Yeah, castle. must be. I imagine there must be some nice walks up on those hills. Cliffs. Cliffs, sorry. <laughs> the white hills of Dover. Oh. Losing coherence. Did you ever have it? Yeah, I mean, 1968 was a really good year for me. Was it? Yeah. Paul loves trains, so our first stop will be a miniature steam railway, which is an ironic contrast to the huge beast that I'm in charge of. That's the motorhome, not Paul. Thankfully, there doesn't seem to be much on the road today. Well, not in front of us anyway. Just looking in the uh, wing mirrors here, there's oh, a, you, yes. you've collected a long it's line of cars so behind busy. you. Sorry, people. And, you know, don't feel pressurised by them being behind you. Oh, look, there's a roundabout, so not everyone will be following us now. There Somebody's had enough. <laughs> Tell our sucker. <laughs> the steam train isn't just Paul Street. I spent many happy summer holidays at my grandma's house in Hythe, and some of my favourite memories are of trips on the train. 
driving through Hyde. We are going to go right past the end of my grandma's road. Was it a good place to visit when oh, you were a kid? it was fantastic. Was it? Yeah, because you had the sea, you had the canal with the boats, the little railway. Down yeah, there was my grandma's. Down there, down, just down there. Yeah. Romney High from Dimchurch. Woohoo, we're nearly there, baby. I can relive my childhood. That'll well do. Well, I like it. After you. I can't wait for this. No, beautiful, isn't it? The railway is 13 and a half miles long, running between Hive in the north and Dungeness in the south. The brainchild of racing driver Count Louis Zabrowski, a millionaire miniature railway enthusiast, Captain J.P. Howie. It's been carrying passengers since 1927, and some of them want to get off. Oh, yes! Wonderful. I bet you look forward to coming to work every day. Yeah, love it. Yeah, love it. Dream job. I mean, yeah, my yeah. parents first brought me here when I was five, so yeah, yeah. Did you ever travel in, in, in this carriage? No, this is the Queen's carriage. Did yes. you know? Yes, because she's only a little woman, so she can easily fit in here. Yeah, her and 25 corgis. During World War II, the miniature railway was requisitioned by the War Department, who created the world's only miniature armoured train. And, at the end of the war, comic superstars Laurel and Hardy were brought in for the official reopening. That whistle is gorgeous, isn't it? Lovely. Isn't it? So it feels nostalgic for you. It, well, although this is a bit posher than the uh, general carriages. Yes. So I've, I've upgraded. Yes. It's time for us to leave the train at Dungeness. Right, there we are. With its stunning shingle beach and head back to Millie. Or Dominic Horse. It's also time for Paul to finally get behind the wheel. So lift up, push in, and then you have to really take it right down to the bottom. That's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, into drive. Into drive. Okay, here we go. How is it behind the wheel? Well, it's, it's, it's taken at the moment quite a degree of concentration. So you keep looking up there to look in the rear view mirror. I know. And, yeah. it's, and it's not there. It's not there. Tonight, we are wild camping. No electricity, no camp shop, nowhere to get our supper. So in the spirit of trying something completely different, I've decided what we really need is to catch fresh fish for the barbecue tonight. The water's edge. <laughs> Given that neither of us have ever tried fishing before, I've roped in local angler Simon to give us a quick lesson. We just lay the rods down here. Okay, thank you. Do you want the back? Oh, hello, there we are. <sighs> I've caught something. I think it's you. <laughs> they warned me about you. Yeah, well, everybody does. Right. Your index finger is your trigger finger. Holds a line like that. Yep. You take the bail arm off. When you want to release it, you release the trigger. Imagine you were playing tennis and you were serving, okay. you throw the ball up and you hit the ball about there, don't yep. you? And that's where you release. Right, you are. What bait do you use? Today we'll be using a thing called a lugworm. And that's Probably what the fish are in here to feed on. So, there. Hold the rod, that's it. There. Is everyone out the way? Good luck, yeah. Clear. Incoming! Brilliant. That was good. That was brilliant. <laughs> With Suki having made an admirable first attempt at what us fishermen technically refer to as casting, it's my turn. So as I'm at the top of that, I let go of the tennis racket over the air. When I hit the ball, Rod's I let go of behind you. Yeah. Wide. And then... <laughs> Don't forget to let go of the line when it's up there. Yeah, OK. So shall we go for it? Ready? Go. What, what happened there? I think it's still in the air. I think it's in the tent. I've caught a tent. <laughs> you caught a tent. OK, I'll give yeah. it another go. So have another go, and I think <laughs> it should all run maybe 100 yards. <laughs> Come here. It's dangerous, very dangerous. So, here we go. <laughs> that way, whenever you're ready. OK. 
<laughs> Didn't take the bail arm off, sir. I'm being a very supportive wife. <laughs> they told me it was Paul Whitehouse. I wouldn't stand there if I were you. Come in, he'll do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yes! Yeah, yes! Yeah, I made and the wall. And it went just straight. Well done, love. Well, you're being, you're being very kind. Speaking I know, this. partly because I think so. I'm going <laughs> <laughs> Could you keep quiet? I'm trying to talk to the dog. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and now the waiting commences. Mm. Yes. Mm. What would you say was the, the main appeal of fishing? There's a sense of anticipation when you're fishing. It's, it's not so much the catching, it's the anticipation and, and getting the bite, and which is why I keep looking at the Yeah, I, I'm starting to follow your eyeline. And so we took Simon's advice and stared very hard at the rods. It's getting a bit, uh, it's getting a bit cold, isn't it? And waited. And waited. And waited. You know? So we... Yes! Oh, that's a shame. So I guess we're not going to be eating fish tonight then. No, I, I, I think the, uh, there's something about sitting beside the ocean, watching a fishing rod that's not moving, that makes you think to yourself, hmm, we're having sausages tonight. Or just a bit of lump worm. <laughs> we won't be having anything tonight if we can't get the barbecue going. And if my attempt at fishing is anything to go by, we'll starve. I think we need some help from the army of motorhomers who are always ready with some words of wisdom. One of the things I'm really passionate about is I don't want to leave waste anywhere and I don't want to use chemicals to light any form of fire, whether it's a barbecue or whether it's just an open fire. So, here's the hack. Your regular cardboard egg box. Typically something that ends up in the bin, but actually can be the source of energy to light your barbecue. Take your coals, drop each coal as though it were an egg into each of the egg containers. And I'm then gonna light the egg box. The heat from the cardboard should ignite the coals inside and then we should be ready to go to cook in about 20 minutes. We all love a barbecue, so Michelle's got a great tip. Okay, these are fresh rosemary leaves, and all you do is once your coals are hot and ready to start cooking, literally just place your rosemary leaves across the top of the grill, and when you put your food on top of this, it will be infused with that flavour. It would taste absolutely perfect. Yeah. Shall I go and get the chicken? Tonight, Paul and I are wild camping near Tenston in Kent, which sounds perfect. If only I can get us there. So okay. we're going to go that way, That's whichever good. hand that is. That's right. Right. Was anything coming from the left? Nothing from the left. Okay, thank you. Or this side, as I like to call it. Yes, this side. All right, that's good. That keeps it clear for me. Uh, can I ask a, a pertinent question at this point? Yes. Uh, why, in this deep into the 21st century, are you using a map rather than satellite navigation? It's kind of nice to go old school, because we might, well, when I say we might, what I mean is we probably will take a wrong turn, and that might lead us somewhere exciting. So there's more adventure than just following somebody going, in 500 yards, turn left. And sometimes, I suppose, with sat-nav as well, there is a danger that they'll take you down very tiny country lanes, which I think this would be a bit of a... Yes. A nightmare. I'm, I'm, I'm finding all my concentration at the moment just on the road this on the side. Road. No, so, you're uh, right. Because the sat nav might sometimes do it, whereas I can guarantee I'll do it. Right, OK. This is what I like. Pouring with rain in a vehicle I'm not used to driving with a ditch either side. You know, it's at times like this I wish I'd passed me test. <laughs> OK. We're a little this bit off-road now, aren't we? Yeah. Ooh, wild camp. Well, down there where there seems to be no discernible road. <laughs> yes. A beautiful combination of a slope, mud and a very heavy vehicle. Sometimes it's good to step out of your comfort zone, but this may not be our smartest move to date. 
Come on, let right. the adventure begin. Yeah, well, fair enough then. A certain amount of foliage coming our way. Here we are. It's like a car wash. Yes. <laughs> An organic car, car wash. wash. Yes. You're going to have to rev a little bit because this doesn't go up hills easily. It stops and then starts sliding back down the hill. Normally when I reverse, I like it to be my own decision. And well, we're stuck. Don't think I'm going to do that. It was starting to... I was, I was losing control over it. So yeah. Uh, there was... Um, I think there was a spot just back there on the right-hand side. What do you think? Yeah, we can try that. Slowly, slowly. We need to go very straight because there's a big tree stump down there. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Oh, you're getting very close to that log. Oh, that was something. Done. Ooh. Well done, love. That was all your fault. How was it my fault? I accept your apology. <laughs> Cup of tea. In fact, what I actually need is some fresh air and an opportunity to wear my ski gear. Ooh. Well, as it's not completely raining, I think I'll just hold my umbrella up like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Follow me this way to the British Museum. Guide. We're going yeah. the scenic route. Oh, there's a drip. I didn't mean you. Thank you very much. This is lovely. It's easier to walk along this than it is to drive. I should go, go. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a handsome looking fire going on up there. Yes, that's a cool little van, isn't it? We were just admiring your van, that's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Do you mind if we come in a bit closer? Of course you can. I'm Paul, this oh, is sorry. Suki. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet I don't bother with that, I just go straight in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm Billy. So Billy. I'm Leanne. Hello, Hi, Billy. Nice Hello, Leanne. You. Hello. Uh, do you want a drink? We've got wine. Thank you. In a mug? <laughs> yeah. I'll just take it straight out of the bottle, though. That's what we're, <laughs> we're very early days yeah. of experience in the motorhome. We did hear some engine Yeah, we do. We do. Yes. Yes. Shall, we, shall we have a look, then? Shall we have a look yeah, in? Yeah, of course you can. Come and have a look. Really? Does that convert into a bed? Yeah, so this comes off. Right. This, under here we keep our duvet, and then it just slots onto here. It's got legs. It's a bit wonky in places, but it yes. does us yeah, proud. Yeah, nothing's level with it. How long have you yeah. had it for? We've had the van for, like, ten months now. So when we first got it, it just had literally a bed, a shelf and a call box and then we just converted it. Yeah. So. Yes. You, are you using it all the time? Pretty it? much. Like, we like exploring new places, so we want to see as much of the UK as we possibly can. Yeah. Ooh, where because have you been? Wales, we've done pretty much the whole of the south coast, haven't we? We've done um, Peak District. So we tend to, a mix between wild camping and going to campsites as well. In, in terms of the, the, the idea of wild camping, I mean, what, are there any rules? I mean, you can't just park in a lay by can you they're trying to like stop that. it like they don't want people parking up on lay bys because no. a lot of people do leave their mess yeah but there's an app on your phone as well you can use right so you, there's like loads of wild camping spots uh-huh and people will review and tell you if it's a good spot to park but oh, you've yeah. just got okay. to be very respectful and you don't get your camping stuff out and cause nuisance to other people around right but as long as you clear up you stay tidy it shouldn't be a problem it's always worth checking the rules for wherever you're camping. I do have another question. We've got an onboard loo, which we've not really used yet, have we? Yeah. No, it just feels wrong, doesn't it? it doesn't. <laughs> you have to get used to it. You have to get used to it. It's something you have to break yourself into slowly. <laughs> and I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> are you meant to put the toilet roll down? Or you depends like what it. toilet you've got, because there's two types. There's a cassette and a compost. That's it, yeah, there? cassette is the one we have. Yeah, yeah, that's the same as us. You can't oh. see it at the minute. But yeah, it's oh, so you have one. Blanket. I it's a under our, uh, our blanket. <laughs> 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 uh, we don't like the look of it, so we thought we'll cover no. it up. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've resorted to passing solids out the window. <laughs> 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 Going down the motorway, and actually it's not worth it, because with the wind direction, you see it come back to you much quicker than you would hope. We haven't really fixed this on properly yet. <laughs> it's our little summer cooking table. But this table. is our beer table for the summer. You could glue a couple of beer mats on there, or blue tackle Yeah, that's so it. When you lift it up, they're just there already. Again, this is where we keep all our muddy boots. Yeah. After going for a walk. Because we started with nothing, we sort of learnt what we needed and then built from there. And we've also got an outside shower, which plugs into our uh, USB socket. Yeah. They, I mean, they've got virtually everything that we've got, um, except in a smaller, yes. yeah. you know, more compact. Yeah. And we can't stand up. Yeah. You don't really need to, do you, I suppose? No, most of the time go to a spot and you want to see outside more and this is just a place to come back, cook, sleep. In. There's nothing perfect, better, is there? yeah. Have you named it because it's got such character? Yeah, she's called Donatella Van Sarchi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. Design check. <laughs> I didn't like it at first, did I? No, I had to convince you. I hated it. 
you're yeah. wrong. Yeah. You're yeah. wrong. Swipe the lady's right. <laughs> well, we're having a discussion at the moment about whether it should be a masculine name or a feminine name. Oh. Well, have you got any ideas yet? Have you thought well, of any names? Um, I came up with Millie the Motorhome. Millie the nice. Motorhome, nice. And you came up with... Dominic it Horse. Dominic, Dominic, Dominic Horse. Horse. <laughs> and I like Dominic. And Millie. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, like for the girls. It's a bit out there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, I mean, okay. right. No one's got so Dominic. We're still 2 1 at the moment. Yeah. Well, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting the two of you. Yeah, no, yeah, it's been really nice. Really thank, thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Cheerio. We head back to Dominic Horse to reflect on life so far on the road. Well, how would you compare this, this experience of wild camping as opposed to where we were yesterday? What I like about this is that you can't see your neighbours so quickly, you know, so you really feel like you're in nature more. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm. It's really quiet and peaceful. You know, you want to be in nature, but you also want to have the comforts of heat. That's it. I want five-star nature. Five-star well, nature. Well, four, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel about the fact that we haven't got fish tonight? Um, we don't have got sausages so far. <laughs> I know. So, you because know, the, the, it's, in my the, mind, the fish and the sausages are of, of equal value. Should yes, I it risk yeah. it? Yeah, do it. Why not? Can you, now, when I say can you hold that, I sure. do mean just hold it. Yeah, that one's yours. No, no, no. Oh, what's that over there? No. No. Uh, do you want sausages? Yeah. Then you need to not drink that. Okay, sure. Can't get the sausages and watch you. No. That's a good set. All right. Control your heart. No. I'm just looking at it. <laughs> you were not looking at it. I was. It. That was going towards your mouth, not your eye. Lights out. Mm, sure. Mm. 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 Good night, Suki. No, no, Paul. Good night, Suki. Mm -hmm. who, who was that? Just Brad. Brad? Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Nothing. Just something Brad said. Hmm. You wouldn't think this better be big enough. Next time, we head for the glorious Lake District and make a beeline for some Kendall mint cake. So with the Google and with the map, I can't possibly go wrong. Which way is the Kendall mint factory, please? Paul suffers from severe motorhome envy when he sees a vintage Airstream. Is it difficult to drive this? It can be at times. I mean, the brakes don't inspire confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and Suki, it turns out, does a really good impression of a very cold woman in rubber. <laughs> Still, you didn't lose your dignity. <laughs>